sweeties how are you doing welcome to naya sim if this is your first time of coming across this channel sit hard kindly smile the subscribe button turn on the notification so you get notified each time i upload and please give this video a thumb up i appreciate you all so much and i want to say a very big shout out to every one of you for all the love and support you all give me here i am truly grateful thank you all so much so today we'll be talking something really very important you know when they say mess around and find out Becky K messed around and she found out. You know what? As I speak to you right now, her account is no more. She was kicked out of TikTok. You know when you think like, you know, freedom of speech is actually allowed, but freedom after speech is not guaranteed. You know what I mean? So uh, she started by saying that uh, I don't care that you are a black owned business, right? And I am like, hey, Karen B., Black people don't even know you, so why do you? How do you? Th why do you think like you know they care about what you think about, about black owned business, all right? And she said that um, she is not a Luda, right? Meaning she is calling black people thieves. And why? How? Why is she calling black people thieves? It is because black people fought for civil rights. You know this thing they always do that whenever or anytime black people are actually fighting for themselves you know it's always tag crime and all of that you know what karen karen really did need to see CRT because she said like she does not care but uh she is so scared of CRT. you know what uh, this video i mean her account is no more but i was able to get all the stitches to this video I mean, got the full info to all the things, all the rubbish she peeled and how people came, really came for her. You know what? Step this to the screen. Let me roll this clip. We'll come back to talk about it. And I absolutely want to read all your comments. Let me know what you all think in the comment section. And straight up, let me roll my clip. I don't know who needs to hear this, but I don't care that you're a black owned business. Well, you have my attention. I'm not a looter, so it's irrelevant info. So there's something interesting about the use of the word looters here. This term has often and almost exclusively been used to describe black folk who are engaging in alleged criminal activity. The use of this term as a racist dog whistle was popularized on a national level by Miami Chief of Police Walter Headley when he coined the phrase, when the looting starts, the shooting starts, to describe what he considered to be undesirable behavior from the local black community. In this case, that behavior was civil rights protesting. And some of y'all may recall that we had that one president. I forget his name, but he's, uh, he's that one who's facing felony charges right now. He was also fond of this particular dog whistle. And as the rhetorical scholars Michael Lacey and Kathleen Haspel point out in the first chapter of the book, Critical Rhetorics of Race, this is actually a pretty common use of the term in most mainstream media. I also don't care that you're a woman-owned business or a Latinx-owned business, which doesn't exist. I don't care. Latinx-owned business? What the hell's a Latinx? Oh... She means Latinx, but she says they don't exist. Does she not know that all words are made up? As a consumer, the only thing I care about is whether or not your business provides a superior product or service at a fair price. That's it. So focus on that instead of attempting to mooch points off your perceived identity. The only own that I would ever pay attention to would be veteran. And even then, I am not going to waste money at a subpar business just because it's veteran owned. And that is a really interesting phrase. I'm not going to waste money on a subpar business just because it's veteran owned. This encapsulates this ideology of consumer capitalism over community investment. And it is an ideology that is killing our communities. Because the implication here is that as a matter of principle, this person would rather give their money to a faceless corporation that produces a product of consistent quality than say a locally owned business that produces a product that is of maybe a lower quality than the faceless corporations. And a major consequence of this is that money leaves the community, the local businesses close down, and the local economy tanks as a result. But the difference here is I owe veterans a debt, a debt I can't repay that they're not looking to me to repay. But they have already provided myself and every American with a great service, so would I be more likely to take my business there? Sure, but it's still gotta be good. So veterans are owed a debt that they're not looking for someone to repay, but they are the preferred choice for businesses unless they can't compete with another business that has more resources. This feels a lot like thanking veterans for their service, but refusing to fund the VA. Now, I don't owe Black Americans or women or Latinx people who don't exist anything. Nobody owes you their business, even if you're a veteran. So compete at business. 
I'm going to skip past observations about the billions, if not trillions of dollars generated in underpaid or unpaid labor by marginalized communities that was instrumental in the creation and maintenance of American society, because I'm still kind of caught up on this idea of arguing with a community that allegedly doesn't exist. But when we slap these labels on things, black owned, woman owned, that tells me nothing about you. More to the point, it tells me nothing about your business, your product, your service, your mission statement. I would much prefer you say, hey, we donate 1% of our proceeds to Planned Parenthood. That tells me something to take my business elsewhere. But it tells me something. What does black owned tell me? Nothing. I know nothing about you based off the color of your skin and vice versa. We are so obsessed with these little identities that tell us nothing about each other especially Latinx, because it doesn't exist. One of the things that often gets missed in this conversation about minority-owned businesses is that this is not necessarily a way of marketing to white folks. As many folks of color will tell you, it is not a good idea to count on white guilt for anything, let alone keeping your business open. You see, the use of identity and marketing lets folks know from those communities that if they go to those businesses, their needs are more likely to be met. Like for example, if I'm looking for a place where I can get tacos de lengua or menudo or good horchata, then I know that I probably need to go to a Latina owned business. Y'all can keep your arroz con pollo with your white cheese. The last thing that I want to point out is that whether intentionally or not, the cross that this creator is wearing operates as a piece of identity based marketing for her channel. And that's totally okay. It just seems a little odd given the context. Oh, and while we're at it, if anyone wants to support Chicano-owned social media accounts that produce educational content, they can do so here. I don't know who needs to hear this, but I don't care that you're a Black-owned business. I'm not a looter, so it's irrelevant info. I also don't care that you're a woman-owned business or a Latinx-owned business, which doesn't exist. Literally nobody needs to hear that. I'm going to work through your statements backwards because that seems to be your speed. Let's start with your description and hashtags here. You say you don't care that a business is Black-owned or woman-owned. Then stop caring. You seem to care a lot for someone who says that you don't care. And then you bark out these orders. Stop looking to score points off your identity. In America in 2023, your identity, whatever it may be, isn't a handicap. Stop treating it like one. Stop asking for handouts based off of it. There's a lot of orders there for somebody who doesn't care. And a lot of insinuations. And then there's the hashtags. What is it about critical race theory that scares you all so much? I think I know. I don't care. As a consumer, the only thing I care about is whether or not your business provides a superior product or service at a fair price. That's it. So focus on that instead of attempting to mooch points off your perceived identity. Mm, yeah, I used to be pretty naive on this topic as well, thinking that since we're all equal, we should all have equal opportunities, right? And that the playing field was completely level. But I was very much mistaken about that. Now, I don't owe black Americans or women or Latinx people who don't exist anything. Nobody owes you their business. So compete at business. By the way, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Latinx. There's the alternative Latin A. Those are labels that people choose for themselves. They don't apply to me and you, so we don't get to tell people they can't use them. Until 1988, when I was in middle school, for the record, women could not borrow money without a cosigner that was a male relative. That didn't do a lot for their businesses, and so they've had a lot of ground to cover. That's about the time my mom went into business for herself and supported our family that way. I also have worked for two women-owned small businesses, the best jobs I've ever had. It gets even harder if you're a woman of color. Any person of color trying to secure a loan has been historically very difficult because of systemic racism and bank policies. Here's a recent example. In 2020, at the beginning of the pandemic, the Paycheck Protection Program, which was a United States federal government program to help small businesses continue to function to give some relief during the pandemic, it disproportionately helped white businesses and did not help black businesses. At least not nearly to the same extent. Now, why was that the case? Because they had to have relationships with banks in order to get that money, which itself was a problem. That's not to say that everybody would with our melanin deficiency is an overt racist. But systemic racism is much more complex than that. And that's what critical race theory is all about. And I think that's why you all are afraid of it. But in the few seconds I have left, let me oversimplify it for you. We went from a society where people that look like us owned other people as property and took all their actual property. And then we moved to segregation where we still enforce those things very overtly. And then we went to this whole, well, there's no segregation, but we still have all your stuff. Good luck. We're all equal. Don't label. Do you think now maybe you see the irony in the statement you opened with that you don't care about black owned businesses because you are not a looter? You don't see the irony? Maybe critical race theory is for you. If we want to support businesses that typically have to work twice as hard and receive half as much, we're going to do that and you can't stop us. 
who needs to hear this, but I don't care that you're a black-owned business. I'm not a looter, so it's irrelevant. When you started your video with, I don't know who needs to hear this, I know the answer to that. Nobody. Nobody needs to hear this. It was like trying to watch someone set a land speed record on how many people they could offend. First you covered all the business owners you didn't care about, and then you had to say that Latinx wasn't a thing. Which I'm sure will come as quite a shock to all the members of Latinx out there. Now here's the part where I get to say, I don't know who needs to hear this, but I think we all know that it's you. People who look like you only make up about 15% of the world's population. You are literally outnumbered by everyone. So I don't think you were in a position to say who is and who isn't important, or who does or who doesn't exist. Well anyway, this has been Doc for Diesel Punk Industries saying I'm glad you made this video so that if we see you in public we know to look at you like this. Thanks for watching, and as always, Crunchy White, pimp forever. Or women or Latinx people who don't exist, anything. Nobody owes you their business, even if you're a veteran. So compete at business. But when we slap these labels on things, black owned, woman owned, that tells me nothing about you. More to the point, it tells me nothing about your business, your product, your service, your mission statement. I would much prefer you say, hey, we donate 1% of our proceeds to Planned Parenthood. That tells me something to take my business elsewhere. But it tells me something. What does black owned tell me? Nothing. I know nothing about you based off the color of your skin and vice versa. We are so obsessed with these little identities that tell us nothing about each other. Especially Latinx, because it doesn't exist. Natalie, honey, you said a whole lot of things to have your duets and stitches turned off. Come on, say it with your whole chest. Better yet, forget her. Let's talk about why those labels matter on businesses. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, of the over 8 million businesses that exist in the United States, only 1.15 of those are owned by people of the global majority. Only a little over 320,000 were veteran-owned, and 1.2 million of those businesses were owned by women. Here's some more exact numbers. Pause to read. That leaves over 5.29 million businesses that aren't owned by veterans, women, or any of the people of the global majority. While I couldn't find a stat on queer-owned businesses, I think it's safe to assume that they're still in the minority stake when it comes to owning businesses. So what does this mean? This means those little labels and identities, which is really funny to hear because white people literally invented race, but that's another conversation for another day, matter when it comes to the survival and the flourishing of our own communities. While Natalie does make a good point about us caring about the quality of product, broken clocks are wrong twice a day. So how gross is it to tell a group of people that their own identity does not exist? Like, who the hell are you? Anyway, if you've gotten to this point in the video and you are a business owned by veterans, women, anyone in the queer community, or any people of the global majority, please feel free to uh, drop your business tags, let us know what you do, and make sure to tag Natalie. Just to let her know. Identities matter. Need to hear this, but I don't care that you're a black owned business. I'm not a leader, so it's irrelevant in both. I also don't care that you're a woman owned business or a Latinx owned business, which doesn't exist. I'm always curious when people are upset with an, a demographic. I don't, why, why does it have to be black owned business? Why does it have to be women owned business, right? These are underrepresented businesses. I have a question. I just, right, you might not agree with that. Why does it have to be American made? Why does it have to be American owned? Somebody will come on here and say, because of the standards. Because of FDA, because of the standards, we prove that we have better quality. Look at our healthcare system. Look at our technology. Look at our school rankings. Look at the people. I'm saying anything else. FDA, this, and the food standard. Look at the people. All right, the so quality is uh, not so I great, y'all. We got to see what it is. We got to so see. Much more, and a lot of stitches to this video. But like, you know, I decided to bring these and trust me, they truly, they ate her. And uh, did I tell you, oh, yo, she is chilling like, you know, somewhere because her account is <laughs> no more. People chased her out of TikTok, I mean, without hesitation, because she has been in black people's business recently. And black people and or not just only black people they are not finding it funny because it's irritating like you know how do you wake up to face a particular set of people I mean without any you don't even have any proof in something and calling them names I love the fact that her account is no more good news thank you all so much for all the support and love and see you all in my next video bye for now